Good evening, everybody. I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Site Plan Review and Appearance Board for Wednesday, August 11th, 2021. Um, Secretary, if you could call roll, please. Dana Post Adler is absent. John Brewer? Here. Andrea Sherman? Here. Vice Patton? Here. Carol Perez? Here. Todd LaRue? Here. Okay. Um, Mr. Poppy, I believe we have uh, a change to the agenda. Uh, yes, Chair. If we could uh, modify the agenda and move item 6E to 6A and then just move everything else down, uh, 6B, 6E, so Okay. On. We all move to amend the motion. Thank you. And second. can I get a second, second from agenda. Carol? Which was the first? I'm sorry. That first was from Price. Carol. All right. Uh, all in favor of the Aye. motion as agended, uh, as amended. Aye. Thank you. Motion passed. Uh, any opposed? Hearing seeing none. Motion passes. The uh, agenda is approved. And uh, I don't believe we have any uh, minutes. So we'll now proceed to swearing in of the public. If you are going to speak tonight on any agenda item or in the general comments. Please rise and be sworn in. If you even think you might speak tonight, please go ahead and stand and be sworn in. By the authority vested in me as a notary of the state of Florida, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Please be seated. All right. Many of the items on our agenda tonight are quasi-judicial items, so I'm going to read the rules that we use for those items here in the uh, um, chambers. This hearing shall be conducted in accordance with the city of Delray Beach quasi-judicial rules. The applicant in the city will be permitted to present their case. The public will be allowed to speak for three minutes each or a maximum of six minutes if the person represents an organization or a group of people who are present but agree not to speak. The city, uh, the board members and the applicant and staff will be allowed to cross-examine a witness the city or applicant will be allowed to offer rebuttal testimony. The decision to approve or deny an application or appeal may not le legally be made on the personal views as to whether or not a project is a good project or not, nor may a decision be based on the number of citizens who support or oppose a particular project. The law requires that all decisions must be made on the basis of whether or not the project meets the requirements of law, the comprehensive plan, and the land development regulations. Do I have any comments from the public? Anyone who wishes to speak on any items that are not on the agenda tonight? All right, seeing none, we will move on to our first agenda item. Before we do that, let me uh, just point out that um, anyone wishing to speak on an agenda item, including the applicants, will use the podium over here. The city staff will use the podium over here where Mr. Poppy is standing now. So if you need to speak, if you're an applicant or you're otherwise speaking, you go around the back of the room, come to this podium over here to, to make your presentation or to speak. Thank you. All right, Mr. Poppy. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the, your first item on the agenda, which is now uh, 6A, is uh, 390 Southeast 2nd Avenue. The, it's a Class 2 site plan modification. And I enter the file into the record, and the development team is here to do their presentation. Okay, and before we get to the presentation, do we have uh, any ex parte communications or anyone needing to step down on this item? None. No. Uh, Todd, I'm going to step down on the item. Um, I was the landscape architect for the project. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, the item has been record entered into the record and the applicant, uh, I believe, is present. If you want to come around to the podium over here and uh, I believe Mr. Poppy has a, um, controls the, the presentation for you. If you would just uh, say your name and your addresses for the record. Um, good evening. Uh, Mr. Chair and members of the board, my name is Jose Aguila. I'm with Curry Sowers Aguila Architects. I spent a lot of time in this room. It's been a long time. 
Uh, and with me is um, uh, 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 Jose Torres, an architect in my office who's responsible for putting this wonderful package together, as well as our clients in the event that they uh, need to answer something. Um, frankly, it's a very simple, um, it's a very simple project. It's um, on, the, on the intersection of 2nd and 4th, uh, south of Atlantic. It's uh, an existing warehouse that has been um, used for many years for storage and automotive, automotive uses and so on. And my clients simply want to, and they have now closed and purchased the property, simply all they want to do is clean it up, paint it, uh, put in uh, uh, stronger doors and windows for hurricane protection. Uh, at landscaping, there's no landscaping whatsoever that is worth keeping. There are a couple of existing trees that we are going to preserve. Um, and then there's a chain link fence around the, around the peri perimeter of the site, and we're going to take that out entirely and add a uh, decorative aluminum black fence as well as a, as a rolling gate. Right now there's a swing gate that you could see it's a little bit tired. Um, I drove by today. It's been cleaned up dramatically. There's almost nothing in the yard now, but in this picture you can see there was just a lot of stuff. And the, the previous owners, they pretty much were using it mostly as, I need a place to store junk. Well, here I got this property in Del Rey. And they did the same thing on the inside as they did on the outside. So, like I said, I was there today, and I was, it was very, very clean. A lot of that stuff is gone. Most of it is gone. The um, city has done some neighborhood improvements in the streets, sidewalks, right-of-ways, driveways, and so on. Uh, and that looks like it's pretty much done. Um, so that's, that's the beginnings of an improvement. And so simply said, what we want to do is clean up something that is a mess and make it nicer and help what that community and that neighborhood is trying to do. We're adding landscaping, which we've reviewed with uh, Steve, the landscaping consultant. He's satisfied with what we're doing. Um, you know who the landscape architect is. She's left the room. <laughs> Um, we're adding site lighting, which doesn't currently exist. We are meeting photometric requirements now. Um, we're painting the building, and uh, I, I don't want to dwell on what we're doing because it's just going from not so good to something much better. And these are our colors, and we'd like for you to please respectfully approve what we're trying to do. Um, I'll answer any questions that you may have. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Mr. Poppy, when you're ready. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Aguila it covered most of the, the project in, in, in good detail. Um, I'll just fill, fill in a couple of things. Um, the file number again is 2021-173. I didn't mention that when I entered the file into the record. It is a, a site plan, landscape plan, and architectural elevations that you'll be reviewing tonight as a class two. Property is located at the northwest corner of Southeast 4th uh, Street and Southeast 2nd Avenue. Uh, the property is zoned CBDRC, which is a railroad corridor, which in Delray, there's two primary areas of the RC subdistrict of the CBD, which have traditionally been um, light industrial uh, in nature, the uses in them and automotive uh, repair, storage, warehouse, et cetera. Um, the northern end actually is, is, has come, has seen more redevelopment with the arts um, warehouse um, in that area up there. Um, in the southern area, which is this property is located in, um, has had a, a slower turnaround, but we are seeing um, improvement within this this area um, it has traditionally you know been a little bit uh, heavier industrial um, an older industrial area and again we have seen some improvement in that area as well as the adjacent neighborhood to the east which is the Osceola neighborhood um, this improvement um, will enhance and uh, continue that renaissance in that area. They are doing minor, quite frankly, minor changes to the building. 
they are establishing the parking lot, um, which is you know before now has just been an outdoor storage dump um, area, and they are um, exchanging the chain link fence for a picket fence, which all will uh, enhance the aesthetics of the neighborhood, and we hope will be a, a catalyst for future redevelopment and improvements within the area. Again, <clears throat> this is Southwest 2nd Avenue, Southwest 4th Street. Uh, the parking area I mentioned is located within that outdoor, what was an outdoor storage area. Uh, so the establishment of that parking area does include landscape islands, the required landscape islands, and um, now we'll have landscaping to be further beautify the, uh, the property. Um, they are exchanging the sliding uh, swing gate with a sliding gate um, to be consistent with that picket fence that they're proposing. Uh, it is, it's a store, it's, the use itself is a storage uh, facility for art and in the staff report you see that they have uh, several locations in southeast Florida that they have need for storage of art pieces. Uh, the, the parking, the required parking is nine spaces uh, and they are, or excuse me, seven spaces and they are providing nine spaces. That's the same thing you saw. I won't go over that again. The, you have three options move uh, to uh, continue with direction, approve, or deny the project. That concludes staff's presentation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Poppy. Anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this item? Okay, seeing and hearing none, close the uh, public comments. Uh, any additional comments or rebuttal to the staff's presentation? No, I had missed two things. One is what are they gonna do there? Scott covered it. And the other is, well, by adding these islands and this landscaping, we're reducing the nonconformity that currently exists. It's still not conforming. Uh, we're reducing it by adding those islands and landscaping, which I think is a good thing. I failed to mention that before. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Poppy, anything else? Uh, no, sir. All right. Andrea, would you like to? You, uh, is your uh, microphone on? Oh. Yeah, but it's up in the air. Um, did you discuss what color the building is going to be? Well, it's in the package that you have, oh, okay. and uh, I can tell you what they are if, they, if you would recognize them. And I do have chips in the event that you really want to see them. But they're, they're nice. There's the, they're the uh, garage eyebrows are showing when it was 70, 67. I don't know what the color is. We have another eyebrow that is kind of a burgundy color. The building is a light gray blue. Um, Sherman Williams 7065. Um, I could have added the names, but I didn't. So, but they're they're attractive, and they're up there on the elevation that was just. Uh, okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So yeah. while we're on the subject of color, I like the I like the pop of that uh, that kind of rich red. Um, is there any particular reason why you didn't? It looks like you've got that over the the office entrance area, but not over the garage door eyebrows, that, that front face of the garage door eyebrows. Any particular reason not to carry that through? Yeah, what we did is we selected a number of colors to recommend to our client and then they had some pros and cons and some additions and recommendations. And I think we're trying to highlight the entrance. If you're familiar with the site, the whole warehouse that runs north south, south of the office main entrance um, we wanted to kind of identify that there are some existing parking spaces right in, side, right in front of the building there, and we wanted to bring people to that location with that storefront, with that overhang. We thought that a different color bring the uh, attention would, there would bring the attention to that area because most of the public really is not going to go to the warehouse. So we thought that was appropriate. Mr. Brewer. Um, 
No, I don't have too much. I, I, I agree. I, I would love to see a little more color, a little more pop. I think, you know, that area in general, I don't have anything specific about the project. I think it's great. Uh, but that area in general, you know, the connection to Osceola Park, I'd love to see more retail, more office coming into that corridor, more arts, um, more retail. Potentially, I think that's really going to be the next frontier for Delray Beach or one of them. Um, but I like the project. It's definitely going to be an improvement for that area. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Price? Um, yeah, real quickly, I, I didn't see any indication of the, um, of the landscaping plan other than um, the site plan. And it looks like there's about 10 trees there. Could you describe the, the trees that are going in place? Yeah, there's a landscape plan in your package. Um, I didn't see it. Um, <coughs> there are all things in the package. I don't see there it. There we go. Um, I will tell you that what we have there are Vero wood, I'm not sure what that is, and some Eagle Stone holly. Now, the, the staff report that you should have um, that I read the last want, one wanted us to change one. some of the species which we agreed to do. Okay. This one? Um, okay, I'm sorry. It's here. Yeah. And then there are some existing trees that are mature that we'll, we'll trim up and shape up and make them look nice, but we've made every effort to try and keep them. Um, and then we have a, a bit of foundation planting along the building wherever we can. I see it, My, me, me bad, I'm sorry. Um, I did have one question for staff. I, I, I think this is an improvement too, but is, the, um, is, this, is this parcel in the, uh, the railroad corridor uh, where that there, there's a privately initiated plan to, to raise the heights to six stories. I know it's in somewhere in the railroad quarter. I don't know if this. I, is, I, I I believe that that was actually on the on the we, uh, west side. It's on the west side of the railroad tracks. I don't know if this okay. was included in that geographic location. I, I don't think it is. Okay. Good. I think it is an improvement. Thank you. Okay. All right, uh, I'll, I'll just add to my comments uh, that, you know, wouldn't mind seeing a little bit more color, but uh, I'm, I'm happy, very happy to see that pop of the red in there. Um, probably heard by now we're trying to encourage, you know, not a single beige and white uh, spectrum across all of Delray. Um, this is a delightful improvement. Thank you for, you know, investing in our community and, and um, fixing what had been an eyesore. Um, I'm very happy with what I see, and, and I uh, just skimmed over the landscape plan, but I very much trust Carol to uh, have done a thorough <laughs> job. So. Yep. Uh, with having said that, uh, would someone like to make a motion? Uh, Scott, can you put them up on yes. screen again? All right, the motions are up on the screen. Yeah, I'll, make, I'll make a motion to, to approve the Class 2 Site Plan Modification Landscape Plan and Architectural Elevations 2021-173 for 39, 390 Southeast 2nd Avenue as amended by adopting the findings of fact and law contained in the staff report and finding that the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and meets criteria set forth in the LDRs. Thank you, Price. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Andrea. Yes. Andrea Sherman? Yes. Mike Patton? Yes. Carol Perez stepped down and Todd LaRue? Yes. Congratulations. Thank uh, you very much. Project passes. Uh, just so that you know that I did listen, we'll discuss with our client the possibility of complementing what we've already done in the same spirit with perhaps a little bit more color where appropriate. Um, we'll see what we can do. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Errol, welcome back. All right, uh, Mr. Poppy, I guess we're back to our regularly uh, scheduled uh, items. The next one would be former item A, now item B. Yes, this would be uh, 6B. Um, so your next item is uh, wild, well, is it 
the wild celery or wild cherry? I was going to say, wild it's cherry, cherry on the uh, <laughs> staff report. Uh, I think we'll fi fi fix that when the applicant gets to do that presentation. Um, so it, it, in any event, it's, it's item 20, 21, uh, 224. It's a color uh, change uh, for this property and the applicants here for their presentation, I believe. Yes, yes. Okay, and if you would just stay, state your name and address for the record. Susan Bagon, 738 Southeast 5th Avenue, Delray Beach. Thank you. And you can- Wild celery. Celery. Oh. Okay. Forgive my pictures. That guy had much better pictures than me. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what we judge on. All right, good. So should I just tell you what I'm changing? Okay. okay. The building now is yellow, so I'm not changing the yellow, but I want to change the trim around the windows, there's a couple around the doorways, to that tea berry pink, which I have a picture of. It's like a baby pink, and that's it, just the trim. But I'm repainting the, the building that's yellow now, it's weathered, so I'm, change, I'm just repainting the yellow and adding trim. Okay. And it's um, a juice bar. It's an organic cold pressed juice bar. Oh, I'm so sorry. that's I. Okay. Okay, that's the back. That's it, and pink. Here's the pink around the trim, and that's pretty much it. Okay. That was it. Thank so, you. and the business is um, a, an organic cold pressed juice bar and general store. All right, Mr. Poppy, for the city. Yes. Pardon? Um. Chair, while he's doing that, uh, ex parte. Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, board members, any ex parte communications on this item? No. None. No. All right, no ex parte. Thank you. Okay, uh, for the record, Scott Poppy, principal planner for Delray. Um, again, the, the property is located at 738 Southeast Fifth Avenue. It's basically located across the street from um, Mallory Square, and um, it's an existing building. They want to repaint it. And I won't go into the detail because it's basically the same graphics that the applicant showed you, but they I have the yellow and the pink for trim. The existing, as she, uh, the applicant indicated, was yellow, and they're just going to repaint that and um, not include the, the, the pink trim highlights. That it concludes staff's presentation. All right, thank you. Any from the one from the public who wishes to speak on this item? All right, seeing and hearing none, then uh, as the applicant, you have the right to uh, offer any additional testimony or rebuttal testimony. Anything else to add? I'm good. All right, and Mr. Poppy? No, sir. All right, to the board then. Uh, John, would you like to start? Sure, no, seems pretty straightforward. Um, looks like a good use down there. Um, nice to see some of those buildings getting activated with some good retail, so. Um, like the color changes, nice pop, nice color along Federal Highway there, so wish them the best of luck. Price? Yeah, I'll echo his comments. Uh, the only other observation is, um, as the owner of a yellow house, you know, in about two years, you're going to have ten different shades of yellow on there because of the way the sun goes around. But, um, <laughs> uh, And I, too, like, I, you know, it's a 1952 house, and it's still up, and, and uh, you're repurposing it. And uh, that's important. Thank you. Sure. I think the colors are nice, and uh, yeah, I think that's great. You're opening up that business. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think it's great repurposing an older home, and um, I think it's fun. I think it's perfect for what your business is, and um, it'll be a nice plus when they have that federal highway. Thank you. I really have nothing to add to what had already been said, so can I get a motion? Pretty simple, it's up on the screen if someone wants to. 
I'll move to approve the color change from yellow with white trim to icy lemonade and tea berry pink trim. Isn't that cute though? The names are actually great names. Lemonade and tea berry. Perfect for your concept. Right? Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Thank you, Carol. Second. Second. Thank you, John. Color roll, please. Dana Price Adler is absent. John Bacor. Yes. Andrea Sherman. Yes. Price Patton. Yes. Yes. Scott yes. Motion passes. Congratulations. You have your color change. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. And thanks to Rochelle. She helped me all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Chambers. Welcome, Ms. Falcone. Good evening. Okay. Should I get started? Okay. Um, Rachel Falcon, Planner, uh, City of Delray Beach, entering agenda item 6C into the record for Delray Beach Club, file number 2021-182, located at 2001 South Ocean Boulevard for consideration of class one site plan mod modification associated with the removal of the existing porta cochere and the construction of a new porta cochere as well as minor elevation changes to the structure and the applicant is here to give a presentation all right thank you and uh, board members any ex parte communication on this item oh. none no all right there's none all right um if you could just state your name and address for the record, and uh, the floor is yours. Good evening. My name is Emilio Levolo, uh, president of 1A Architecture, 2100, Corporate Drive, Boynton Beach, Florida. Um, first of all, thank you very much. I want to really extend my uh, gratitude to Rochelle and, and Rachel that have helped me tremendously through this process, and uh, thank you for them. Um, currently, we are on their uh, interior renovation of the club, um, and part of the improvements we are proposing an exterior structure, portico share. And let me just see if there we go, which is located on the east side facing Ocean Boulevard. Uh, currently, as you probably seen it, is there's an awning or there was an awning? We already knocked it down. Um, and again, uh, around the Portico Share, we have a, a uh, we did a building back in the years, a pavilion that we basically we're trying to replicate. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead to show you some existing images right there. So as you can see, uh, the existing Portico Share is age, um, and we are trying to mirror what we have on the uh, south side and bring it back around and replace the mansard roofing, the existing mansard roofing with metal standing seam uh, roofing so that it all comes together with the existing pavilion that we have on the south. Part of the improvement also we are replacing the existing uh, window system for impact systems, the uh, railings, we're uh, changing them and uh, obviously uh, changing the color as is on the exhibits on the color palette. Uh, let me just go back to the rendering. And as you can see in the Portico Share, we're basically tying all the architectural language together so that it reads as one from all sides of the elevation, or the, depending on the position that you're in. Uh, it just reached all together with the same architectural elements that we use in the pavilion. So it's basically a replication of the pavilion, bringing it back to the clubhouse. Um, again, I don't want to simplify the constructability of it, but is is the main component of this improvement is tying the portico share to the rest of the site. Uh, and then obviously the color is reusing the existing colors and uh, as they are in the in the package, I'm not sure if I um, omitted anything other than um, staff report 
If you have anything else, I might be able to compliment. Okay. Yes, sir. Ms. Uh, Falcone, when you're ready. Okay, so the Delray Beach Club is located just south of Linton Boulevard off of Ocean Boulevard, and it's located in the RM Zoning District. Uh, here is the existing survey of the property, and this is the area where the existing Porta Cochere is located. Uh, the existing photos of the um, Porta Cochere that has now been removed. Um, and just more photos of the window systems that they have on site. I have compared the existing and proposed elevations below here. So we have um, in this red circle, here's the roofing structure for um, the Portica Share. And then um, they're bringing this window up here and then adding some railings on this side. And on this elevation, this is the um, the Porta Cachere entrance, I believe, and yes. Um, yes. And then we have some columns over here. Here's the south elevation, right side, so you can see the Porta Cachere structure. This is the existing with the awning, and now they're adding the roofing element as well as the um, roof over the entryway to the clubhouse as well. And here is the northern elevation. There is some windows and a door and stairs, and they're also removing window treatments on this side of the elevation as well. Um, and then the other elevation of the side of the portico share. This is the proposed elevation with the color palette. We have green and beige um, and some taupe, taupe colors as well. And that concludes my presentation. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this item? Seeing and hearing none, we'll go ahead and uh, back to you. Anything, additional comments or any rebuttal of what the city? If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, and Ms. Falcone? I do not, thank you. All right, Carol. I think your elevations look nice and uh, I like the colors and it does tie it all together so I really don't have uh, too many things to say about it. Are you changing the landscape in any way or? Uh, we're working on that. <laughs> we'll be back on that one. Okay. But we, we have retained a landscape architect and we'll be before you probably in the next 30, 45 days. Okay, so. so we're, we're basically, we're going to upgrade that entry view. You know, we have those uh, age uh, palms, and we'll come back to you. We're going through that right now. All right. So, and it looks like the um, the cover, the port cochere, is in two layers. So you have one lower, and then you have another one higher. Yes, right it, behind it because of constructability. And let, if I let me, wait, can I change? Oh, there we go. <laughs> let me see. I think on the. Uh, Oh, that's your, uh, let me see. There is a, on the rendered piece that we have there. As you can see, um, there's a vehicular component right there, and to the right, that's where we step up into the entry. So we wanted to give it a little bit more of a open space and not tied in, because if we tied into the same level of the structure, then we just kind of compress ourselves. Mm -hmm. so that's more of a, a transition piece, if you will. I think it gives a little bit of hierarchy once you come into the building. And the steps that I see in that west elevation, are those, those are behind uh, um, the, the steps in the middle? Are those behind the vehicular? Yes, ma'am, all that, if you're looking, that's how you, from the vehicular, you have to step up to meet the uh, grade elevation of the, of the structure. Uh -huh. That's the main ele elevation, yes. It's, it's, plus or minus three and a half feet, four feet from the grade. And it doesn't look very wide there. Do you, um, uh, if, or, yes, if we, we long or? yeah, it, it, if we have, I have, um, 
in the floor plan. I mean, we have the uh, ADA ramp, so just mm -hmm. enough with the ADA ramp, we have about, I believe, eight feet yeah. before you go, come in, so. Okay, thank you. Chris? I think it's an improvement. It, you know, it, it, it's a great old club, but it was it was getting a little tired looking. Yes, sir. Um, and um, I've spent many nights there. It, the um, my only observation, and I do I do getting getting rid of the mansard roof loses a lot of the dating <laughs> on, on the building and um, and upgrades it. My only real comment is on the uh, the west elevation where you have. I understand why you bumped it up the um, on the pork share. The um, the kind of the dormer like windows that, that, that kind of jut out on the car car entry area when you're looking at it from the west elevation, it, it kind of gives a whole space of pagoda kind of look to me. And I don't know, I understand the function of the dormers is to allow daylight in when people are getting out of their car. Correct. But um, but I miss I miss I could not hear you correctly, sir, when on the on the on the vehicular portion of the port cashier, there's those dormer. Right. I guess, and those are in, in, intended to let light into the more, more than anything else. Yes, sir. When you're looking at the flat west elevation, it it, it it looks like a little out of symmetry to me. But you know, you're the architect, so that was. <laughs> but I but I do think it's a it uh, it Is modernizes it? the club, and it's in a great spot. So I'm glad it's thank you staying in the same kind of original shape. Thank you. I suspect you're not going to really feel that effect very much when it's completed. I suspect it's more when, the you're there, when you're there, you're there, you won't see it too much. And, yeah. Done. No, I, I'm. I'm excited to see that you're improving the property with all the knocking down that's happened over there. We lost right by the sea, and uh, Delray Beach Club has fond memories for me. My buddy used to park cars there, and we used to hang out there and play tennis and jump in the pool, and it's just. For me, and I know for a lot of the locals here, it's got a lot of historic relevance. Yeah, it's a hidden treasure, actually. It yeah, really I've is. I've been very privileged working the last two years with them. And it's, 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 it's not ostentatious. Wonderful. It's just Correct. a real nice, functional yes. beach. It's actually a character of Deray. You know, it brings out the character. So, so I think it's, with it's the fun. colors and everything you guys are doing, you're, you're playing off of that. Um, and uh, with everything that's going on there, I think it's it's... It's nice to see that the Delray Beach Club's going to be around for a while. Yeah, oh, yeah. It warms my heart. So. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> That's it. Andrea? Um, I agree. I think it's a uh, really attractive update. I think you utilize the materials that were already there. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's very attractive. I mean, it's really cohesive now. The stone works with the metal. It's, it's, it's very attractive. Thank you. I'll just uh, agree with what's been said. Uh, it's a nice addition. It's nice to see that uh, I've been to that club many times for different events and, and whatnot over the years. And, um, you know, I was a little worried uh, that this was going to be replaced by condos. <laughs> so I'm, I'm very happy to see this. Um, nice job. Nice, nice Thank you. Much as a way to tie it into the, the feeling of the rest of the, the club. So. Thank you. And again, Mr. Chair, if I may, I would like to congratulate your team. It's been a pleasure working with them. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. The staff here in the city work very, very hard. And they do. Uh, I think they have a very um, service-oriented mentality. They, they want to make sure that everyone is treated well. And, uh, no, but it's important because, you know, so, it's instrumental. You. Makes my life easy. <laughs> thank you. Uh, can we get the motions up? All right, can I get a motion, please? Sure, I'd like to make a motion to move approval of the Class 1 2021-182 Site Plan Modification and Architectural Elevations for 2001 South Ocean Boulevard by finding that the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and meets criteria set forth in the Land Development Regulations. Thank you, John, and a second. I'll second. And that was Price. When you're ready. Yes. Andrea Sherman? Yes. Craig Patton? Yes. Al Perez? Tom Leroux? Yes. Thank you. Right. Good night. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. 
Next item. I believe you're up for that one as well, Miss Falcone. Okay, so um, agenda item 60 into the record for 105 to 111 East Atlantic Avenue, file number 2021-109 for consideration of class one site plan modification associated with the removal of awnings and the modification of the existing dumpster enclosure to the rear of the property. And uh, Mr. Cavelli is here to give his presentation. All right, thank you. Uh, before we it's you, Mr. Cavelli. Uh, board members, do you have any ex did you have any ex parte communication on this item? None. No. Nope. Okay. Hearing none. Uh, the floor is yours. If you could just state your name and address for the record. Thank you, Mike Cavelli, 1209 South Swinton Avenue, Delray Beach. Um, this is a um, combination of of two items. Um, the, the first of which is a, was actually a result of a notice from code, code enforcement with regards to the upper awnings on the building at the corner of Atlantic and First Avenue, um, where Cabana is, the Cabana restaurant. The, um, they're the upper awnings that were um, in, and here's, here's the before picture. Um, in terms of these little eyebrow awnings over over the windows, they're they're worn and they're tattered, partly because in order to maintain those, you have to like get a, a, a bucket truck, close the sidewalk. It's a three o'clock in the morning kind of an operation, and so obviously they were neglected just because of the logistics of what you have to do for 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 maintenance, um, and and so we did it. 3.30 in the morning one night, go and take them down to get them recovered. And ironically, the, it, the picture looks much better when the sky's really blue, too. So, <laughs> um, but we started looking at it and said, why would we put them back up? The building looks cleaner. It, it goes better with the, the, um, the lower awning, which is a m metallic composite material. And so we decided that... Um, this is the Atlantic Avenue side, and there it is with, with them off. And we, we decided the building looks way better without them, so we'd come before the board and, and, and see if we could get approval to not put them back up. So um, no other changes to the building, you know, with, in terms of colors or anything like that, just not to put the awnings back up. And we think it looks a lot better and a lot cleaner than, than it did. The second part of it is, while we're cleaning up those kinds of things, um, in the back, uh, there's been a, a couple of occasions where we've had issues with code enforcement over the dumpsters that are located in the alley. And um, currently, if you see the, the red line, is about the size of the existing dumpster. And there's two, um, I think, four-yard dumpsters in there. And, they can't be any bigger because of the overhead power lines that run in the alley. So they have to be small enough so when the trash people come, they roll them out into the alley, they dump them, and then they push them back into the enclosure. So, so, the, so we, we met with waste management. We can't do a compactor because of the logistics of how you have to empty it and things like that. And the overhead lines are, are a real issue. So what we've, we've decided to do is where the yellow is, we would uh, upgrade the enclosure and, and make it a little larger um, so that we can put a third dumpster in there and then put a rolling gate on it so that we don't block the alley when you open the doors to, 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 to access it. Um, this dumpster services Cabana, Tremonti, Sloan's Ice Cream, and all of the... Uh, the, the office space upstairs of those buildings. So there's, uh, during season, um, there's a lot of trash generated on the weekends and we've had issues where, you know, they're just overflowing and you just can't get waste management there fast enough. So 
while we're we're doing this, staff said, why don't you just include an expansion of the dumpster? So that's that's what we're doing. So I don't have, um, and and you see the. The, the current dumpster is just a shadow box fence, so we're just gonna, gonna continue that and, and maintain that, um, clean it all up and, and you know, make it uniform, but that's pretty much the way, way we're gonna go with it. Happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. So not much more to touch on. Thank you for your presentation, Mike. So the property is located in the Central Business District, uh, just in downtown um, Cabana El Rey. And um, these are the, this is the site plan um, with the dumpster enclosure. You're not making too many modifications to it. The landscaping will remain the same, um, just cleaning it up a bit and um, making it a little more functional. Um, for the restaurants in the area and as you've seen before this is the western elevation with the existing or the former awnings and now they are proposing to uh, leave them off as well as on the southern building elevation and that concludes my presentation they did get a recommended approval from DDA as well okay thank you anyone from the public wishing to speak on this item and seeing none, we'll close that down. And uh, any uh, rebuttal, additional testimony? I have none. Happy to answer any questions. Okay. Ms. Falco? I have none. Thank you. All right. Carol? I agree. The awnings look a lot better down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think the, uh, the dumpster enclosure is just a, an extension of what you already have there, right? Right. Um, so the issue, you were getting uh, problems because you're garbage was overflowing or? yes okay yes. will this solve the problem yeah we've we've met with waste management a couple of times and they they feel that would do it deal with it okay thanks mike mm -hmm. yeah. um i just had one question about the shadow box fence about the longevity of it because they deteriorate pretty quickly so I was just wondering why you were going to continue. Well, the one that the one that is there has been there quite a long time because they oil it, and if you saw in the picture, it's not your typical weathered. Okay. Um, so oiling it really helps to preserve it. So mm -hmm. that we were just going to kind of be consistent and oh. not reinvent the wheel. Okay. Nice. Okay. Yeah. No, it looks it looks it looks cleaner. I agree on the uh, on the awnings. Um, I, the and I, I guess the city and waste management they require um, if, if there's a dumpster and there's an overload or if it if it rains and there's there's in the water, I've I've seen some pretty funky water outside of not this one in particular but several dumpsters in town and it, isn't the uh, the operator supposed to keep that on site? I believe so, and um, I know that if they are not keeping up with it we have code enforcement out to the properties to okay, and then it. just a, well just two two other quick points so just a point the how, how do you how do you unload those three dumpsters are they that you take one out and unload it and then put it aside and then get to the second one yeah you kind of got to stack them mm -hmm. they pull them out into the alley and because the, the overhead lines run right over where yeah, the no, dumpster is but when you got when you're getting your third bag you got two dumpsters sitting in the alley that's not a traffic problem or anything no, they they do it pretty fast Okay, and then it, and then I appreciate the letter from the DDA. I would uh, I would really appreciate when we get advice from other uh, panels if if they could be a little more specific, especially if they if they had concerns. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we come up and, and we have no idea that there were that the other panel had concerns. I could, this is kind of a no brainer, but um, I'd, I'd appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Huh? <laughs> no, cleans the word. Cleaner in the back, cleaner in the front, nicer lines. Um, great I have to agree I, I like the the removed uh, awnings uh, <laughs> hard to believe how much it improves that building actually. Yeah. it was surprising uh, to us also 
And um, for years, I was the area chairperson for that block of the Delray Fair, so I'm very, very familiar with the dumpster and all the problems that you have right. in season when there's a lot of traffic and stuff, and uh, you obviously need the more space, so an improvement. And if, if I may, uh, to, to Price Patton's uh, comment, uh, during the whole height of the COVID thing, we actually had an issue where there was some, some, some issues with one of the grease traps in, in mm. We actually repaved, we, we milled and repaved the whole parking lot in the alley in that area um, in conjunction with the city because obviously alley city property. Right. We improved the drainage so there isn't standing water. We, there is a drain in there now. So all of that also has already been resolved. I saw that in the plans. And you regraded it too? So to, yes. Okay, yes. great. So, so we've, we're really it. trying to just clean it up. Yeah. That's good. That's a good improvement. Thank you. We absolutely appreciate that effort on your part. Uh, board members, anything else? Uh, if not, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move approval of the class one 2021 190 uh, site plan modification and architectural elevations for 105 111 East Atlantic Avenue by finding that the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and meets criteria set forth in the land development regulations. Thank you, Carol. And a second? Second. Thank you, John. And Rochelle, when you're ready. Okay, Dana Page Adler is absent. John Brewer? Yes. Andrea Sherman? Yes. Bryce Patton? Yes. Carol Perez? Yes. Bob LaRue? Yes. yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I, I would also like to echo that staff has been wonderful in, in, in the process. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Ms. Falcone. Uh, entering agenda item uh, 6E into the record for 502 East Atlantic Avenue, file number 2021-204 for consideration of class one site plan modification associated with the installation of a hood duct on the southern portion of the structure and replacement of the storefront windows with sliding glass storefront doors on the western facade. Uh, and thank the applicant you. Is here for a presentation. Uh, any ex parte communication? Nope. No. No. All right. No. If you would, gentlemen, just state your name and address for the record. And Hi, good evening. Go ahead with your presentation. Jared Guzman, 1471 South Federal Highway, Boynton Beach. This is Brian Bullock. He's the architect on the project with the Benedictine Bullock Group. Welcome. So my wife and I are opening up a restaurant on the Ave where the former Starbucks was, um, Federal and Atlantic Ave. We're going to be offering sustainable farm to table, organic, locally sourced, everything sourced locally, local farms. We think it's going to be a really great addition to the Ave. Uh, we opened up a smaller location in Boynton Beach a year ago this month, and it's been getting great reviews, so we're super excited. Um, these are photos of the current facade, and <clears throat> on one, two, and three, you'll see where we're proposing to switch the storefronts into a full-length slider, which we'll, I'll show you a rendering here. Whoops, too far. So on three down here below, you'll see one, two, and three, that's what's being proposed for these storefronts. Um, you can see that, let me get to here, we um, have implemented using a brake metal insert in order to keep the facade to match the northern elevation. You'll see on um, five, six, um, and actually you'll see on all the rest of these storefronts how it has the arch. So this is an effort to keep the facade the same and that's pretty much it on the storefront side. And then if you can see in two, um, you'll see where we have proposed to run a hood duct on the northern side, uh, back side of the building between the easement. And this is a rendering of what the sliding doors would be. 
give it that indoor outdoor seating feel uh, and that's it and the, will there be uh, outdoor seating under the overhang on that west side then yes sir okay all right miss falco So the property is located at 502 East Atlantic Avenue in the Central Business District, uh, where the former Starbucks was located. And uh, this is the building elevation. So we have the existing above and proposed below. Before they, the storefront windows, they were just windows, um, these three here. And now they're proposing to implement the four panels the four panel storefront doors that open up underneath the arcade. And then on this portion of the structure, they would like to have a three panel door that opens up. Uh, here is the hood duct. It's uh, on the southern elevation. There is a structure blocking the view of it, but we uh, have asked the applicant to paint it the same color as the building so it's not noticeable if people are passing by and look through the crack. Uh, this was seen at DDA on Monday and they did recommend approval. They thought it would be a great improvement to the uh, structure. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. And I uh, have to ask if anyone from the public wishes to speak. And seeing no one from the public here, we'll... <laughs> Close the public comment section. Uh, any additional testimony or rebuttal of the staff's testimony? Uh, no, sir. Thank you. All right. And anything I else? Do not. Thank you. Okay. To the board then. Um, price. You know, I think it's going to be a good improvement, and I wish you luck opening a restaurant in uh, these um, kind of trying, trying days. Um, and my only question is, and I think we ran across this on another facade of, of the uh, arcade tap room. It's, it's purely a question of symmetry with the doors. You've got, do you, could you put the west elevation back up, please? Right there. So you've got the three arches there on the left, but you go, like, looks like a bay window, slider, slider, then the arches stop, then you got a slider and then a bay. To me, it would look more appealing on, from the outside, and, and, I, and I can understand if you've got um, circulation problems on the, on the inside that's dictating this. But to me, it would be cleaner if you had the three sliders under those three arches and then the two bays on, on, the, on the right. It just seems like it would be a better sense of symmetry. Um, I think it's a, um, you know, I, I think that that um, would be great to get some some traffic on that side of the street, some people traffic. So that's my only observation. So the um, the sliders that are on the furthest right side, I guess that would be the south side. Um, that actually opens up into what inside there will be a bar um, and then on the windows that you mentioned to the left a portion of those windows are actually in the common area outside mm. of our space mm. okay so the logistics of it it, it made sense so th that red but don't you control the uh, the first four openings no just the no just, three, the, just two the two in the middle four. just the three the just three that have the circles yes sir so those are the ones you control and so you're changing it okay if you think about the inside there, price. Yeah, I remember. There's a long, space. long entryway, but I yeah. thought, but yeah. that's a common area. It's partly the common area. It's kind of weird the way they've got it set up because they subdivided it after the building was. It's all, it's all kind of weird, but. <laughs> yes, well, that's true. It, it would be good to see a tenant in there. Finally. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Andrea. I, it's pretty straightforward. Um, there's no color change. There's no, it's just uh, changing the doors. Um, I'm, I'm fine with it. And I, I think it, uh, I'm excited about you opening a restaurant like that. I think that's going to be great. Thank you. Cheryl. So, uh, my only criticism is, is uh, yeah, the, the rhythm and the fenestration of the doors and the windows. I think even if you couldn't make that, uh, well, the window on the left, even if it's in the entry, maybe it's just a false looking door, but it just seems like that volume there in the middle needs to all be the same type of window. 
And then over on the right, those two need to be the same type, no matter, uh, you know, it's like pick a type and then go with it. But I just think that that, it looks off, it looks unbalanced, and uh, the volumes are just broken up. You can see in the, in the top, uh, the existing elevation looks actually, you know, looks better because it's all the same. And I don't, I don't think you need to have all the same, but I think you need to just at least do two different things for the one volume on the right and the one volume in the middle, even if it's a false uh, window. Because yeah, actually you've got three types of windows there. Because the one on the right, you got a three, what is this, three doors? Mm -hmm. it, just, uh, it just looks off. That's my opinion. I, I almost wonder if there's something that could be done with those doors. Uh, the bay style window has the, the wide central and the narrow side panels. It, would it be possible to do something with the doors that you're using to get a wide central and a narrow uh, side panel look to it and then maybe sort of extend the line that runs along the bottom of that window so you get sort of that feel carried through. Um, I know that portion bumps out. I don't know if you're thinking about it in those terms. It does come closer to the sidewalk than, right. than where the overhang is. So I don't think it's gonna be as obvious as it is on the renderings, but I certainly understand your point about the, your and Price's point about the lack of symmetry and the way that kind of feels. Um, and this is a prominent part of, of downtown Del Rey. I mean, that corner's a, a big intersection for what Del, downtown Del Rey looks and feels like. Any thoughts? Um, if I could. Do you have your architect with you? I don't know if he... If I may respond, um, Brian Bullock, uh, Architect 1525 Northwest 3rd Street. Um, this is kind of just driven purely by um, cost and the functionality of those doors. They are pocketing, so they all pocket. In order to get them to overlap, that drives the proportions of the four panel door. So kind of stuck with that. And then the one obviously on the far left, we have a tenant demising wall. It's actually a glass wall, but it terminates on that. So uh, we certainly could look into replacing that with maybe some fixed glass. Um, again, just a cost consideration. I mean, he's, he's trying to open up a restaurant here during COVID, so we're trying to be as sensitive as possible. So um, maybe those are items that might be considered in the future. Uh, the window that's on the far right, uh, again, we could mimic sort of the three panel situation uh, with some sort of fixed glass on the far right, uh, but that is a kitchen. So the functionality of the kitchen and having glass to the floor didn't make sense for us. Uh, so that, that's kind of, again, cost is our, our biggest concern there. I'm still wondering if, you know, there's something you can do with uh, maybe not uh, having the, um, doing clear glass, gray glass. I think it's all clear. Yes. Uh, you know, I wonder if maybe the lower, you know, whatever it is, third of the glass is, is filled in with a, you know, colored panel or something like that so that, um, it looks continuous with uh, with the window style next door. You still get the effect of the full glass doors from, you know, what knee height up or whatever, and uh, and and still get all the pocket door aspects, but give a visual effect when doors are closed that maybe um, you know carries through the continuity of the window height on the, the furthest south window. We could also look into possibly adding, I guess, a horizontal mut uh, mutton bar or something like that. That something would like that, yeah. Carry the same, uh, you know, there's like a horizontal expression line there at the water table. Yeah, exactly. So maybe put some sort of applique there, and then, I mean, if you, I mean, it might look a little odd, but we could differentiate the glass, like you said. Maybe there's a, a frosted versus a, a gray or clear versus a gray. Um, With the double pane doors. They're, they're single, yeah, single pane. Um, okay. Yeah, so you know, you can put the mutton, or you could even on the inside of the glass just put a sheet of, film. you know, self adhesive colored sure. sheet or something on there and just get that effect a little bit. Um, John, did we get to you yet? I think we didn't. No, I don't have too much. I, I agree with all the points that, that uh, the board has brought up. Um, I also am sympathetic to getting a restaurant open in the middle of COVID and dealing with, you know, you've got an older structure that has an outside and an inner structure that they're trying to create on the inside. So 
um, anything we can do to mitigate it and, and try to get that balance going, I think would be uh, beneficial to everybody. I do like the idea of that area of Atlantic Avenue finally getting activated. That building's been there and uh, just begging for something to go in there. I think it's a great concept. I think it's gonna fit perfectly in with everything that Amar and uh, the wine room and, and I know that some of the restaurants, J&J, &J, and um, even over the bridge and uh, you know, can benefit from that whole corridor starting to fill in with Atlantic Crossing coming. So um, hoping you're positioning yourself pretty well here right now for the future of Delray Beach and coming out of this COVID situation. So wish you the best. Um, Ms. Falcone or Mr. Poppy, if they were to apply uh, we were to prove it as is, but they were to, on their own, apply a uh, um, uh, mountain, mountain bar or um, something like that. That uh, wouldn't take additional approval, would it? Um, <clears throat> if you make your direction very clear um, and specific, I, I... I'd be inclined to not give them any specific direction and just... Um, you know, give them the, the goodwill to, to hope that they would do something appropriate, but I just want to make sure that if they do do some of what we talked about, it wouldn't take an additional approval from our side. Okay. Then I need more generalities. <laughs> uh, are we looking for a, a horizontal mutton bar uh, yeah, going that's, across? That's what vertical? I was thinking is a horizontal mutton horizontal. bar across that, Very good. Uh, the, I guess the number four window spot. Um, the southernmost outlined in red. Okay, got it. I think we can handle that, yeah. Okay. So um, I, th I think that's the approach I would recommend to, to the board is, uh, you know, we give them some leeway here and I think the staff can work with them to, to address that, to address our concerns. I think that would be relatively inexpensive but we can make the motion as it stands. Any uh, other thoughts? My biggest concern, I suppose, uh, I can even take the doors on the right, but um, it's just that one window left alone on the left-hand side is, uh, that, that's what I don't care for. But, uh, don't we have considerations of the interior? Isn't that what's going on here? So yeah. It's kind of hard that's, to balance. That's the problem, right? They've got that archway. That's but why I didn't that. really comment about this because I thought, you know, there are just too many limitations. Ed, any thoughts on a solution for it, though? <laughs> Me? No, that's what I was th saying. Maybe they just put in another window, and maybe it's just not opening. Or, you know, they put in another door, but it doesn't open. It's just a fixed um, fixed doors to make it look like the other two on the right-hand side, so that at least you have some continuity there. And still leave the one to the far right. And it's the kitchen. I would prefer the the one on the left be changed and the one on the right, you know, the right okay. side volume stay the same. And, but uh, just because that area kind of pops out, so mm -hmm. it's almost like it could be its own little storefront. But right. the part in the middle, I mean, those three those three uh, openings are symmetrical. Yeah, well, they should be symmetrical. Under the arc. I understand there's a I understand there's a problem inside. But. Yeah, I would have to even go back to the landlord and because it's not part of our space. Right. Our hope too is that, and uh, you can't tell it from these drawings, but there is a, a landscape element along the street, the fifth, you know, that, that flanks basically along that shoreline or that edge of the uh, street there, and it uh, I think it gets more narrow towards the right side, but it's thicker as it comes to the left on that drawing on the bottom there. And our, our hope is that some of that landscaping will provide some screening, so you may not notice it as much. Um, I mean, it, it is under cover, so it's a little bit further back from the rest of everything else, and uh, tables and chairs in front of it might also sort of yeah. give the illusion that distract the eye, maybe. <laughs> Carol, how would you feel about planter boxes under those windows so that you got more of a vertical feeling and it, it filled in the... It almost seems like you need to leave the door in the middle. You could leave the what is it, the, the collapsible doors, and then put the window on the right, so at least it's, you got window, door, window. But, I don't know. I don't, so that works with their needs for the restaurant flow. 
want to have the whole thing open. I, I, I understand that. Yeah. Yeah, well, I only... They are under the overhang, so you're not going to see them. You know, it's not going to be as prominent mm -hmm. uh, visually as it is to us looking at the drawings. You guys could send a letter to the landlord and say, hey, help us out. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> it's not easy. I don't see any easy alternative other than the simple visual ones without forcing them to go back to the landlord, deal with additional expense that's for something that they don't really have use or access of. And I mean, it's you are going to have outdoor seating there, right? That's the whole idea. Yeah. So there'll be chairs and tables out there, and the idea with those particular, uh, those are the same ones that Lionfish put in. They're, I forget what they're called, European, or uh, I forget what the doors well, they're sliders, they're not nanos. Yeah, they're sliding. Sliders. sliders. Yeah, they're not okay. nanos. That, that whole thing can open up on the nice days, the 10 or 20 that we have per year. <laughs> and, uh, and then you can shut them when it's unbearably hot like it is right now, and folks that w wish to sit outside can sit outside. So there, it's not going to be, that's not how it's going to look. There's going to be Correct. tables, chairs, probably some planters out there. Yes, the intent was is to put the planners in between the tables, actually, to right. get separation to each of the customers. I don't think it'll look that dramatic as it looks right now. I think, and I don't even think you can get that view from standing across the street because the road is so narrow. Um, you know, that would I think we're standing in the middle of a Mar restaurant right now for that kind of a view, right. halfway down the block. <laughs> um, Big gal, big gals. Big gals, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can we get a motion? They want to make a motion on that? I'll make a motion to move approval of the Class 1 2021 204 site plan modification and architectural elevations for 502 East Atlantic Avenue by finding that the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan meets criteria set forth in the land development regulations. Thank you, John. Second. Okay. All right. I'll roll when you're ready, Michelle. Okay, seeing a place Adler is absent, John Brewer. Yes. Andrea Sherman. Yes. Rick Patton. Yes, with the proviso that they, you know, take into account some of the things we're talking about. Never mind. Well, that's just got to be part of the motion, so it's, it's either yes, yes. or no. <laughs> yes. 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 Gentlemen, thank you. Thanks for listening to us. Um, please do work with staff as we've suggested, um, but you um, are approved as, as presented. Thank you very much for your time, Rochelle and Rachel. Thank you very much for your help as well. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for bringing a delightful concept to Dari Beach and good luck. Thank you. It looks great. Yeah, we'll be in. All right, uh, Mr. Poppy, any uh, staff uh, comments, reports? Nope, no, no comments uh, tonight. All right, thank you very much. And uh, anything from the board? No, Scott told me he's still trying to figure out where that, um, that in-lieu tree fund is. I'm sure, we'll find, we'll find it sometime. <laughs> it's incredible, but um, again, I, I, I I assume sometime we'll get we'll get an answer to that. I appreciate it. Thanks. Yep. Can't find the money. I've got a question. Just um, really. So how is the board doing? Because we are having trouble, you know, with uh, getting quorums and. Uh, where's? Yeah, it's uh, it's been um, an unusual. Um, summer uh, for me for doing this for 25 24 25 years here at Delray never really had the, the, this kind of uh, summer um, so um, we are working on getting um, a replacement for Andreka um, and moving forward um, yeah it's been interesting all right. Anything else? Mr. Bennett, any comments? Okay, thank you. 
Uh, Mr. Poppy, thank you again to you and your staff. I, it was great to hear from the applicants the experience that they've had. I know that's the quality of service you try to bring, but that's a real compliment to you and, and the people who work for and with you. It's always great, always great to hear. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you hear the other side. Oh, I'm sure they do. Uh, just, a, just a tad. Yep. <laughs> All right. Yep, thank you. Motion to adjourn. Somebody. Meeting adjourned. All right, thank you. I saw something. Uh, something. I think they also were posted.